Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Marduk. And of course, last time we successfully completed Legion's Arena run. In terms of where that one ranked with regard to difficulty relative to other people's arena runs, I'd say roughly middle ground there, similar to what we saw with Solar, in that there were one or two enemies that were a little bit more on the difficult side, but just meant that we probably needed to take one or two extra turns to take them out, didn't just immediately get rid of everyone like we saw with people like, say, Eloian. So not as hard as Slinix Arena Run, where we actually had one occasion where we had to totally reset and go with a different setup, otherwise we were unable to complete it. So as for who's up this time, well, it is, of course, Jarla. So before we get going with her, let's take a closer look as to what her strengths and weaknesses are so we can set herself up for success here. So. Charla, level 37, is a little over 900 HP and 250 just about MP, so probably going to want to try to find some ways to boost that HP a little bit more so that she's not in one-shot territory. Of course, that is the key there. Just want to make sure that she doesn't get taken out in one hit by anyone, and then presumably that means that on our next turn we can just heal up and hopefully get back up to full HP. Then MP, that's high enough that... Yes, of course, Charla being primarily a spellcaster is likely going to use that MP fairly quickly, but there's enough MP there that we shouldn't have to be relying too much on mana berries or ethers to restore that MP, so hopefully we can stay using our skills as often as possible. In terms of her attributes, she's a little bit below average. In terms of strength, starts off with only 10 there, so physical attacks going to be difficult to make those carry her too much. Of course, we when we can, would like to do that so that we can save some MP. In terms of vitality at 12, that's also a little bit below average. She's a fairly high level here, so that's making up for that a bit, but as we were saying, we probably do want to boost that a little bit. So 17 spirit to start off with is definitely above average, and agility at 16, also a little bit above average as well. So Sharla is likely to be able to go before most, although not all, of her opponents. And then with the high spirit, of course, we'll be able to deal a bit more damage and have that higher MP we were talking about earlier. Let's take a look at her inventory, though. What can we equip her with to set her up for success? And in terms of her weapons, the Obelisk, that is the final and most powerful of the spears that we picked up with 40 attack, low crit chance, so that's probably not going to be a factor, although that hasn't really been a huge factor with most of the arena runs that we've had thus far. Then the MP, plus 50 to that, that is partially why we see she has so much right now. So plus two strength is covering for, like we said earlier, one of her weaknesses. However, bear in mind that although the Obelisk is, yes, the strongest spear, it only has 40 base attack, which is actually still on the low side. That is only a little bit stronger than Eloian's strongest harp. And of course, normally we would not be using Eloian to attack much, although of course she did do fairly well in her arena run. So. The plus five spirit is another way in which Charla's MP is going even higher and making her an even stronger spellcaster. And the empowers fire and empowers air. That's not actually doing anything. So you could perhaps, maybe, entertain the option of going with something like the Fire Fang, that being the second strongest of our spears, does have 36 base attack rather than 40, and we would miss out on a lot of MP, a little bit of spirit, and that plus two strength as well. The reason why you could potentially consider doing this would be that it does inflict fire damage with physical attacks. And that is one thing that we are going to talk about once we look at Charla's skills, that being that she is an Aeromancer and therefore only has access to air elemental abilities. And if we make a point of not hitting our offensive reactions for Soul Strike, then we could make her physical attacks with the Obelisk be non-elemental. So if you were to go with the Fire Fang, that means instead of being non-elemental, when we miss our offensive reactions, we could instead have fire damage. In terms of would you prefer one over the other, we don't necessarily know if we're going to have enemies that are weak to fire or enemies that we'd rather be using non-elemental damage toward. So for that reason, like I said, I think for the most part, the Obelisk for everything else is more powerful. So we probably do use that, but if, say, we did find there were a bunch of enemies that were weak to fire, then maybe you could make the Fire Fang work. But let's definitely stick with the Obelisk for here, and yes, if we run into issues, we could give it another shot with Fire Fang. In terms of her chest plates, we have typically been going for the Night Jacket with other people, because it does have such amazing resistances, so absorbing 
meaning 120% resistance to dark, as well as 20% to fire, water, air, and earth. Charla is an air elemental character, meaning that she will have 20 starting resistance to air, 20 starting weakness to fire, so this would cover for that weakness. So that's strong. The only downside would, of course, be that it has no physical or magic defensive properties there, so we could say, instead, go for something like the Lesser Rainbow Shirt, if that was one of our concerns. That would give us 6 defense and 3 magic defense, so making up for that. Though, a little bit less, for sure, on the resistances, only 10% for fire, water, air, and earth. Does give a little bit of light resistance, which the Night Jacket does not do, and then 10% dark resistance is, of course, much less than the Night Jacket. So that's an option. Then we could go for the more pure resistances here with something like the Geo Jacket and go all out earth resistance with absorbing, meaning 120% resistance to that. Also gives us a little bit of vitality and HP. Like we said, we probably do want to get her, I'd say, a little bit above 1000. That is typically the highest amount of damage we'll see any one enemy do at a time. So. This would help us get closer to that, but we might find there are other ways to make that happen as well, so I wouldn't say that should be our deciding factor here, at least. Other than that, we could go with the Shaman's Vestment. Gloria's starting chestplate does have decent defense and magic defense, actually not quite as much as the Lesser Rainbow Shirt, but it does also give a little bit of spirit, a little bit of MP, and a little bit of earth resistance, so it's one of those middle ground options there. Similar to Meridor starting robes here, the Inventing Coat, again, Decent defenses, a little bit of HP rather than MP, and some fire resistance there. And likewise, the Dark Robe, a little bit of MP and Spirit, and 50% Dark Resistance. Other than that, we could go with the Souls. We've entertained these options, of course, with Solar, and considered them for other people as well. 10 defense on the Steel Soul and 50% resistance to physical damage means that if that was the type of damage we were most concerned about, then this might be the best way to go. But no magic defense here does mean that it is, as you said before, fairly one-dimensional, and we might want to try to be a little more well-rounded, so I think we probably pass on that for now. Could go for the Azure Stole if we wanted to get decent defenses and maximize Charla's spirit and MP, would make her a stronger spellcaster, but we do already have a lot of that going on, and so I think we probably do pass on that as well. If we were really concerned about her HP, then we could go with the Green Stole for plus six vitality, now, like I said, I think there are probably other ways to make that happen, and Charla is level 37, which is fairly high, so if your Charla is a lower level than this, and you are concerned about her getting taken out in one hit, then the Green Stole could be a way to counter that. And then, the Scarlet Stole for plus 6 strength, I would say, of these various stoles, probably the one that is the worst fit for Charla, because she does start off with the lowest strength of all of her attributes, and... Yes, you could make the case that this is making up for that a bit and making it so that we could rely a little bit more on her physical attacks. So, not to say that it's out of the question, but I think for the most part, we would rather have other things instead and we'll only use physical attacks if and when we must. So for that reason, I think we'll go for the Night Jacket. We'll see how it works. And I think this means that we will have enough resistances that we can cover a lot of ground. In terms of helmets, we have the Elf Cap, which is one of the best in terms of defenses and magic defenses, with three apiece, also 20% earth resistance, so fairly well-rounded in that regard. Could go for the Black Hat for maximizing dark resistance. If we are going for the Night Jacket, then this is probably not the best way to go, because with only one defense, in terms of everything other than dark resistance, it's definitely not that good. So, at least as we have things set up at the moment with the Night Jacket, I think we definitely do want to pass on the Black Hat here. Skull Helm is similar to the Elf Cap in that it also has strong defenses here. A little bit more in physical defense, a little bit less in magic defense, but it does give us a little bit of vitality, so again, this could be a way to get a little bit more life on Sharla. So, not out of the question. And then we could also go with the Feather Crest for a little bit less in defenses, and a little less well-rounded because it is definitely more a magic defense type of item. And plus one spirit does mean, again, we could boost Sharla's magic power and MP just a bit using this. So, I think for the helmets here, there isn't any obvious choice. It is mostly a matter of personal preference. If you are concerned about her HP, take the Skull Helm. If you're concerned about Dark Resistance and you haven't been using Night Jacket, then Black Hat is probably the answer. If you want to maximize other resistances, then the Elf Cap is probably the way to go. And if you want to just get as much firepower as possible, then Feather Crest is probably the answer there. I think the Elf Cap is probably the best rounded, so let's go with that one. And then in terms of items here, we, of course, have the Scarab with Health for 5 defense, 5 magic defense. This does do a good job of covering for the lack of defenses 
on the night jacket because that's a lot. Five and five coming from an accessory here. The auto regen also very helpful and the plus five vitality. I'm thinking this could very well be the primary way in which we're boosting Charlotte's HP. Then a little bit of resistance to other statuses could be a difference maker every now and again in one fight or two. So I think we're probably going to end up going with this and the yellow fairy giving us auto haste. That has of course been our setup for most if not all of our previous arena runs. If you were particularly concerned about other resistances, say if you weren't going to use the night jacket, or if you haven't made a point of mastering things like resist earth and resist dark, then you could more strongly consider things like the sapphire bangle. It does have decent defenses with 3 and 3 physical and magic defense and 50% water resistance. Also, some spirit and MP, so once again, if you were trying to maximize Sharla's magic power, then that would probably be the way to go here. Similarly, you could get 50% Earth Resistance on the Emerald Bangle, and again, 3 and 3, Physical Magic Defense. This one would boost Vitality and HP, so if you haven't leveled up Sharla quite as much, and you're concerned about her HP and don't want her to get one shot, this would probably be the best way to go in that regard. Then, you have the Eclipse Amulet. This, I would say, is another well-rounded item here, with 2 Defense, 5 Magic Defense. If you haven't picked up either of these guys, the Scarab of Hell and the Yellow Fairy, then this could be a strong option here. Also probably would not want to pair it up with the Night Jacket, because of course the Night Jacket already has us absorbing dark damage, whereas this one here is giving us 50% dark and light resistance. The dark is probably not all that necessary when you already have as much resistance as we get from the Night Jacket. So for that reason, I think we'll pass on this and stick with our usual setup. So it'll be the Scarab of Health and the Yellow Fairy. And then, one thing to note is you definitely do want to make a point of picking up the other elemental damage potions, because as we were saying before, Charla is pretty limited in terms of what types of elements she can deal damage from, so if you were able to get by without these in the past, then this is probably the time to make sure that you put these on. We could find that because the arena is set up such that it is supposed to be based on Charla's specific strengths and weaknesses, we shouldn't have any enemies that are absorbing a bunch of air and physical damage, otherwise we'd have no way of winning. We'd be stuck in that loop like we were with Slinnick, except in Slinnick's case, we at least did have a way of working around it by making sure that we equipped our Soul Strike, but with Sharla, even that is not going to be much because Soul Strike is, again, going to give us air elemental damage, so then we'll have all of our other HP, MP, and status removal potions here. Now let's talk about Sharla's skills, and so we'll start off with her active skills here, and like we were saying, they are 100% air elemental. So we have lots of different air damaging spells here. We have Lightning Bolt, which is her starting lightning damage skill here, an electric heavenly zap that inflicts air damage. So this one, we probably won't be using too much because yes, it is basically just a weaker version of Thunderbolt. The only thing is that it does cost half as much MP. So we might be able to get away with using this to save some MP against some weaker enemies on occasion. Other than that, we probably won't use it. Thunderbolt, this will likely be Charla's bread and butter. It's Lightning Bolt's older sister. It is basically just a stronger version. It does, like we said, cost twice as much MP. If we don't need that much damage, then we might be able to get by with just a Lightning Bolt. Healing Wind, this is useful for Charla to have her own healing skill, yes. However, of course, if we load up on enough of our potions, then we could also restore HP that way and save some MP in the process. This also is a little less flexible because, say, if Charlotte were to become cursed and couldn't use any of her own abilities, then we would not be able to do this, so if you find that you're out of those potions, this could be something to fall back on, but probably good to make a point of making sure that you are loaded up on health restoration items. Null Air wants this is, of course, very effective against particular bosses, the ones we are expecting to hit us with really strong air elemental abilities. Against the type of enemies that we encounter in an arena, I don't think we're going to be using this all that often. I think we'll probably have our fair share of enemies that are not using air elemental damage, and of course that means that this won't do anything at all in that case. And even when enemies are using air damage, the name of the game in the arena is usually just to maximize your offensive firepower and take people out as soon as possible, and doing a bunch of setup skills like Null Air, maybe not going to have enough time to make that happen. Remove Paralysis is similar to Healing Wind in the way that we could just do this with an item and more likely would opt to take that route because we don't have to be worried about does Charlotte have some kind of status on her that prevents her from doing this, so make sure that you load it up on your remedies and motion potions as well. 
Next, we have Arrow Shell, which gives her an Arrow Shell status, which nullifies air damage and damages attackers. So, this one is another, I'd say, somewhat gimmicky type of ability here that I don't really think we're going to be using too often. In theory, you could make the case it might be best against big mini-bosses and bosses, and we're not going to find ourselves going against too many of those. For the most part, we'd probably rather spend our MP and turns just doing upfront damage with something like a Thunderbolt. Dust Shield is somewhat similar in that regard, I would say less gimmicky, in that it just gives us physical defense, which is no joke. It's just that it takes a while for that to stack up enough for it to be a difference maker. So I think that we're likely going to be trying to take people out before we have enough time to make Gust Shield a difference maker. So for that reason, again, one of those skills that is useful against mini bosses and bosses, useful when you have a full party, but less so when it's just Charla against just one or two enemies in short battles. Agility boost, same story here. We're hoping that Charla has enough agility to go before most of our enemies because her agility is decent, although there might still be some that beat her to the punch. I think this is another one, though, that probably not going to be too concerned about boosting our own agility because that means we're sacrificing a turn to do that, and we'd probably rather just take enemies out. So, let's move on to our offensive reactions here, and Charla doesn't have too many options here, just a little bit of damage, accuracy. Here's a Soul Strike, so remember, her Obelisk is non-elemental damage, so if we hit our reaction, Soul Strike will change it into Air Elemental. That is really the only elemental damage flexibility that she has outside of using those potions, so that's why that's so relevant. Green HP gives us a way of restoring some HP in addition to the regen that we're getting from the Scarab of Health. And then Poison Damage is, theoretically, one of her strongest offensive reactions here, 20% chance to inflict poison. However, I'd say that this is probably another one that is most relevant in mini-bosses and boss battles because the longer battles, there's more time for that poison damage to rack up. But in the types of battles we're expecting to run into here in the arena, probably less likely for that to be a big difference maker. So I'd say if you don't have enough RP to throw on all of her reactions, then you might actually want to get rid of poison. But we do have enough here, so we'll take it all. In terms of physical defensive reactions, she doesn't have too many options here because she's primarily a rogue user, and that tends to give more magic defensive reactions than physical defensive reactions, so we'll take everything we have here. Magic offensive reactions. Technically speaking, there is one other type of magic offensive reaction that Charlotte has not mastered, that being the magic fire damage, except, well, it doesn't do anything for her, because as we saw previously, all of her abilities are air elemental, so, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could throw that on as well, but we'll take the generic damages and the air damage there, because they're the ones that will help her. Then magic defensive reactions, she has many more options here, and the general rule of thumb that I follow with these is that we do want to go with the more generic types of damage mitigation, so the 10, 20, and 30, and spell resistance, because it doesn't matter what type of damage we're taking, those will still take effect. Then we do find ourselves in a bit of a tricky situation here, though, with 6 RP remaining, does mean we could go with 50% resistance to one of these elements here, which would be strong, but we're taking a guess as to which type of damage we think we might take. Whereas we could just go with 10 damage soap, which is far less in terms of the amount of damage that it's mitigating. However, it does apply regardless of what type of spell we're getting hit by, so it's more versatile in that sense, but far weaker. So this is a tough one. I'd say maybe we go with fire, because remember that Charla is an air elemental character, meaning that she does start off with fire weakness, so this will cover for that a bit. And we are, of course, using the Night Jacket, so Dark Resistance, that one is probably pretty safe to say that isn't the best fit for her. But you could make a case for Earth, Air, or Water. Then if we go to the passive abilities here, let's take a look at what our options are in terms of resistances. That's usually where we want to start. And she has mastered Resist Dark, but she does have the Night Jacket on right now. So, yes, it does mean she would heal more to Dark Damage, but probably not necessary. We'd probably rather have something like Resist Earth on so that we can be close to resisting that in its entirety. She has also mastered Resist Ether, which would add another type of elemental damage that she's pretty resistant to. Thing is, it does cost 8 RP, and it's pretty unusual for us to run into other elemental enemies, so we might find that we'd rather put on something like Rainbow Aura here, because that gives us 20% resistance to everything does only leave us with 3 RP though, so that is a bit tricky, because 
There aren't any abilities that have an odd number of RP for Sharla, so that means we're stuck to just two. And that means basically plus one of whichever attribute we feel is most fitting. We could go Vitality if we felt like we still wanted a little bit more in the way of HP. Spirit for a little more offensive power or MP. Or Agility if we thought she has a decent amount of starting agility, but just a little bit more might mean that she could more consistently go first. I'm thinking let's play it a little bit safe here, go with Vitality, and let's see where that leaves us. So she's now at just shy of 1,400 HP. I'd say that's a pretty good place for us to be. That means that I don't think there's going to be anyone who could take us out in one hit, that being the important threshold. Then we're still at 248 MP. I think that is more than enough. Then attributes, yes, we did boost her vitality a bit, as we saw. Resistances, though. Yes, by picking up Resist Earth, that does bring us over 100, so that is big. Then we, of course, with the Night Jacket, are over 100% resistance to Dark as well. Only on 20% fire resistance, so yeah, I think it probably does make sense for us to have used the magic defensive reaction for fire. Our other alternatives would have been earth. We're already over 100% for that. Water, we have a little bit more for water resistance. It would bring us to almost 100%, which is tempting, but maybe that's not quite as meaningful as fire. And then air would actually bring us over 100%, so again, it's somewhat a guessing game, but I'm deliberately going to use the type of resistance that we are weakest in, so that that way we're at least risk of getting one shot. That again being the primary goal. So I think this is a good way for us to set up Charlotte here. Let's make sure that we heal and save, because we boosted our HP a little bit there. Okay, and then now, let us begin. So, we will, of course, do the survival tournament, and we will do it with Charlotte. And we are ready to go. So, who's first? We have a centaur, and it does go first, and we do have enough defense there that doesn't deal much damage. We actually heal all that back with our regen right there. So, for the centaur, fortunately, you are weak to air, so we would love to face as many enemies as possible that are weak to air, because as we said before, that is far and away our strongest element. So the interesting question we have here is, how confident are we that we could take you out with lightning bolts? We do have two turns before you go next, so I think maybe what we try for here is, let's actually go with a physical attack, see how much damage we do, and then we'll gauge from there, do we think we need to wrap things up with a lightning bolt, a thunderbolt, or can we even just use a physical attack again and save all of our MP? Give it a shot. Oh, well, Charla's damage is more than enough. Well done, Charla. I'm sorry I doubted you. Okay, on to round two. Leaf Stinger, it's quick as well. So we have gone up against several enemies that have outspeeded us. And we did pick up a poison here. We do have two turns before the Leaf Stinger goes next. I think what we do is on our first turn, we use an antidote to get rid of that poison. And then on our next turn, I mean, we can definitely take this guy out in one turn, right? So poison gone, with just over 200 HP and 100% weakness to air, we could definitely take you out with just a physical attack and again, save our MP. No problem there. Plenty of damage. That's also good to get a general sense as to how much damage can we do with our physical attacks there, and it was, in that case, over a thousand damage when I believe that enemy had zero defense, whereas the first enemy that we faced, we dealt a little bit less than a thousand, I do think they had some physical defenses. Here we have an eye orb. Okay, this could be a bit more difficult because you have almost 3,000 life here. You do have a little bit of air weakness here, but you do also have 10 magic defense. So this, is it better to go with spells or physical attacks? Because as long as we hit our reactions, we are using air elemental damage with our physical attacks. That means you aren't mitigating any damage on that, whereas you would be if we were to use Thunderbolt, even if Thunderbolt would normally have higher base damage. So I think for that reason, let's try saving our MP still, go with physical attacks here, and it's just about 800 damage. So definitely not gonna be able to take you out before your next turn. Maybe for that reason, we do try a Thunderbolt. Let's just see how much damage this does, but I'm highly skeptical that you'll be able to deal over 2000 damage with it. It definitely is more damage, yes does throw on a shield, so at least it's not attacking us here. That's a physical shield, mind you, so that means that our physical attacks will deal less damage. With two turns, though, might we still be able to take you out with physical attacks? I think we might be able to make that happen. Let's give it a shot here. It does seem like, I mean, as long as we deal as much damage as we dealt last time, we would be able to do it, so let's go for it. Yes, that is the case, so 
we did have to use one Thunderbolt, so we used a little bit of MP, but I think we've done enough to save MP early on that we should be in decent shape in that regard. On to round four. Rexasaurus. These guys being from the Earth Temple, and they are once again weak to air damage, so that's great. Do have some physical defenses here, and at about 2,000 HP, means that it would be pretty close if we were to use two physical attacks here. I think we'd have to get the high end of our range. Even then, we might not be able to take you out. So I think we probably do need to go with some kind of spells. I think, tell you what though, let's try a physical attack first, see how much damage we deal, and then we can gauge, do we need a lightning bolt or a thunderbolt? We'd of course like to save some MP if we think we can, but I don't think we deal enough damage with a lightning bolt here. I think we probably would need to rely on a thunderbolt. It'd be close with a lightning bolt. We might if we got lucky, but I think let's play it a bit safe here. Definitely enough damage. Yeah, might have been able to get by with the lightning bolt there, save 6 MP, but we still have over 200, so when we're halfway through the arena, or just about to be, I think we're in decent standing here, but a bunch of enemies this time. This is our first time going against multiple. They are, again, all weak to air. That does mean that we are likely going to use some kind of spell that attacks everyone at once, which means it will be more MP heavy. Do we need to use a Thunderbolt, or can we get by with just a Lightning Bolt to save some MP? I think... Let's try using the Lightning Bolt, see if we can take out at least the Furry Biters, and then maybe the Centaur will be damaged enough that we can take it out with a physical attack from there. Save some MP in that regard. Uh, that backfired. Furry Biters also go next. So we did restore almost, but not all, of the damage from that one. So I think now we have the Centaur going next, then we go, then the Furry Biter. So we want to try to take out the Centaur next if we can. And I think we did deal roughly this much damage with our physical attack the first time we faced one of these centaurs. This one may be a slightly higher level. Let's give this a shot. Again, it's a bit of a risk, but we do deal enough damage. That means that we do go next, because again, the centaur would have gone next, but we obviously took it out. So I think with the furry biter, we can absolutely use a physical attack here. As long as we didn't miss, we would take it out, and no problems there. We did take it out. Okay, so... Round six, who do we have here? Oh, this one is very different. Okay, fortunately, we do go first here. But we have a Witch Doctor, who is also from the Earth Temple. He is weak to air. That's nice. However, we also have Green Souls. And they are 90% resistant to air. So I would say these are probably the enemies that we were fearing that we might run into. Ones that are very resistant to both air and also completely resistant to non-elemental damage. So we are likely going to want to use some kind of damaging potion, likely the fire kind of potion, to take these guys out. But I think we prioritize the Witch Doctor first, because that one we should be able to take out in one hit, and well, do we need to use Thunderbolt? Could we get by with a Lightning Bolt? Could we get by with a Physical Attack? What are your defenses? You have none. So it is a bit of a risk, but I think we might actually be able to take you out with just a Physical Attack here. And yes, we can. Okay. These guys will go next, the Green Souls. They are dealing other damage. We were wondering, might we want to throw that on? Because we did, of course, master that ability, 50% other resistance. We didn't go for it. Instead, we went for 20 resistances across the board. And, well, hopefully we can take these guys out quickly enough that that's not a huge factor. So we do definitely want to use something like an Alchemist Fire here, I think, because using air damage when you're 90% resistant to air is not going to be terribly effective. We hope this can take these guys out in one hit. And it can. Okay, good. So we can go twice in a row here. We'll definitely do the same thing here. Take out another one. This last one, we'll get the chance to go again. And it is a fair bit of damage there. We do restore some of the HP, but not all. So I think what we want to do is actually spend one more turn to have the regen get us back up to close, if not all the way, to full HP. So let's use just a physical attack here, not spend any MP. This will, of course, do only a little bit of damage every leech two, not that that's a huge factor, but... The regeneration gets us back up to full. Now we use the Alchemist Fire. Take you out. Okay, so yes, that is one where if we did not have those Alchemist Fires, that would have been far, far more difficult. So yes, definitely highly encourage you if you are yet to do your Charla run to pick up plenty of those in preparation for that fight. Might see more along those lines here. Here are the Centaurs. They do go first. And they have some fire skills there. We were thinking about do we throw on the fire resistance and yes we did see that some magic fire abilities there did pay off so these guys they do have a lot of hp that is a bit tough 
to take them out in that regard, although they are all weak to air. So that's helpful, yes. The male centaur is the only one who has not yet gone, so it does go next. Can we take you out before your next turn? I think we probably need a Thunderbolt. Do we deliberately target just you to maximize the damage? Or if we flip it across everyone, would we still have enough to take you out in one turn? It'd be close. I think we might deliberately try to just target you. That way we definitely have enough damage. You were going to go next. Now that we take you out, means that we go next instead. The two female centaurs would go after us, so we do want to try to take them out on this turn here. And I think we've saved enough MP that I think we can go pretty aggressive on the Thunderbolts here. This is probably the best way to go. It's enough damage. Enough for one of them. Got a low-end damage roll on the other one, though, so that one is still standing. Some water damage in that regard, and, well, we actually healed all that back with our regen, so no problems there. I think we can definitely save MP just to use a physical attack. More than enough damage there. So that, potentially a tricky one, but I think we have enough damage that it wasn't too difficult. If that had gone on longer, though, those were some of the highest damage enemies that we've run into thus far, or at least a combination of them. Round 8. Okay, and Amber is still, this is another tough one. Because if we look here, it does have 50% resistance to air, and no non-elemental resistance, but it does have a physical shield, and it does also have 40 magic defense. So this one, I think, is another instance of we are likely going to want to use a potion, this time a really cold water, because you are very weak to water. Let's do this here, and it might be enough in one turn. No, not quite. And you go next, and I was not realizing that you were going next, so uh, I did not hit the reaction there. We did not heal all of our HP back. That was fire damage, so that is one of our weaker elements. If we had hit our reaction, we would have, of course, gained another 50% resistance and probably would have healed all the way back up to full. But I think because we are not on full HP here, let's just use a physical attack and to, oh, the hope was not killing it so that we would have enough time to go back to full HP and then use the really cold water to take you out. Had more damage than I was expecting, but we're nearly on full HP, so hopefully that's not a big factor here. Second to last round, round nine, means oftentimes we find mini bosses at this stage, but it is a fire elemental. And you may say, well, sure, that's no big deal, Lids, except it's a pretty strong counter to what Charla has going on because 100% resistance to air, and 80% resistance to non-elemental damage. So this is another one where, if we didn't have the special damaging potions, then our air damage is quite literally doing nothing. Our physical damage would mean we'd have to use our physical attack, not hit our offensive reaction so that we wouldn't trigger soul strike, so we'd be limiting our damage, and then it would also trigger the fire elemental's reaction. Remember that when you hit them with physical skills, they do counter with a fire damage skill of their own. And normally, Charla would be weakest to fire, so that could be a nasty setup if you are not prepared to use something like this. However, it takes out the Fire Elemental in one hit. So again, very important to pick those up with Charla. Last round here, like I said, we've seen mini bosses in the past. Who do we have for Charla? It is, okay, we've seen, I think, maybe even two of these before. A Molester, these being the mini bosses from the Dark Temple. As a reminder, they have 10 defense, 10 magic defense, no air resistance, so that's nice. No non-elemental resistance, that's also nice. Means that we probably do go for maximizing our damage with a Thunderbolt here. How much do we have on that? 1,200 or so. Dark side misses us. Because we do have our reaction that makes it so that we have a 30% chance of outright avoiding spell damage. We do also, of course, have a night jacket on, meaning that we are healing to dark damage, so this enemy here probably doesn't pose too much of a threat to us. It might have non-elemental attacks, and that would be most dangerous, so not to say that we are completely immune to damage here, but in many instances, I think we'll take zero damage, and well, we have enough damage here that we likely will be able to take you out right now, so no problem at all. Success with Charla. Get some dark essence, and we pick up the feather charm. Per arena reward, congratulations, fighter. You've won the tournament, apparently. Here, have a prize. Also, get out of here. All right, so congratulations, Charlotte. Let's take a close look at what your reward was, that being the feather charm. So it's an accessory, four defense, four magic defense. It's a special item that Charlotte won from the arena. Only she can equip it. It gives her 
a new magic offensive reaction. That's interesting. We've seen some active skills that people have been able to learn from these arena rewards, but never a reaction, at least not yet. Then it's, of course, only usable by Charlotte. It does give plus three spirit and agility, further increasing the attributes that she's strongest with, and resisting air, again, the resistance that she's strongest with, and resisting 20% fire, coming for her weakness. So that looks pretty strong. That is definitely something we'll want to put on and learn this new offensive reaction. Let's also have a quick chat with our latest victor, Carla. What do you have to say about your arena run there? Hmm? Well, Charla, I noticed you don't say much. Oh, I don't say enough? Sorry. Uh, why don't you say much? Um, um, well, um, I don't know. I suppose I just listen better than I talk? I don't like to be a bother, and I don't want to say the wrong thing. Well, why not? I just don't, for some reason. It's just, um, being a bother would be awful, wouldn't it? I don't want people to bother me, so I don't bother them. But, um, I like listening, so don't take that the wrong way, please. Well, I think I understand, anyway. I'm like that, too. Yeah, I've noticed you don't talk much either, Bardek. I sort of like how I'm not the only one. Yay, now should we return to adventuring? Okay. All right, a rather short chat with Charlotte, but congratulations there. In terms of how difficult that arena run was relative to other people's, I would say that's in a similar category to the Legions and Solars of the world, and that you definitely do want to make a point of picking up those offensive potions. Otherwise, you're going to have fair bit of troubles there, I'd say maybe even more so with Charlotte than we saw with either Solar or Legion, so in that way, we might say that Charlotte's arena is the second most difficult one that we've had thus far. Of course, Slimix does still take that crown, at least until anyone else finds themselves in the same kind of trap where they outright fail their first arena run. But with that, congratulations one more time to you, Charlotte. Well done picking up your Feather Charm. As for who is up next this time around, tune in next time to find out.